In other words, the legislation proposed only to enforce the divine law as quoted from the book. Yet those to whom, point two, yet those to whom the legislation was directed and who were expected to execute its provisions were not allowed to read and construe the law for themselves. And this for the very reason that there was a possibility that they might take the divine word as it reads and as it was actually quoted in the official proceedings. They set up a claim to infallibility, which would what? Which would return them to the papacy. Three, therefore, to preclude any such possibility, Congress assumed the prerogative of official and authoritative interpreter of the divine law and declared that the first day of the week, commonly called Sunday, is the Sabbath of the fourth commandment of the divine law, that the first day of the week, commonly called Sunday, is the meaning of the word of the Lord, which says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Where are we in history? It is time for thee to work, Lord, for they have made void thy law. They set up a claim to infallibility. But what they also did, did you note there, they judged a preference of one sect of Christianity above the other. They quoted there the Israelites and the Seventh-day Baptists as being on one side and the rest on the other. Now, A.T. Jones makes this observation. The Seventh-day Baptists and their observance of the seventh day as the Sabbath of the commandment quoted were definitely named in contrast with those who observed the first day of the week, generally known as the Christian Sabbath, with reference to the commandment quoted. And the preference was adjudged in favour of the latter. Now, the Seventh-day Baptists are a sect professing the Christian faith. The original Sabbath commandment was quoted word for word from the Scriptures, The words of that commandment, as they stand in the proceedings of Congress, say the seventh day is the Sabbath. The Seventh-day Baptists, a sect professing the Christian faith, observe the very day, the seventh day, named in the scripture, quoted in the record. There are other sects professing the Christian faith who profess to observe the Sabbath day of this same commandment by keeping the first day of the week, commonly called Sunday. And hence it is that that day is generally known as the Christian Sabbath. These facts were known to Congress and were made a part of the record. Then upon this statement of facts as to the difference among sects professing the Christian faith, touching the very religious observance taken up by Congress, the Congress did deliberately and in set terms adjudge the right of preference between these sects professing the Christian faith. Thus Congress did the very thing which the fathers of the nation declared it impossible to do without erecting a claim to infallibility which would lead us back to the Church of Rome. 1892. 118 years ago. The very year after this, in the General Conference session, A.T. Jones said it stands as a literal fact before the world tonight that the government of the United States January 31 1893 that the government of the United States is no longer a government of the people by the people and for the people as our fathers made it but the subjection of the people by the churches and for the churches. The church rules the government. She has it in her hands, she is holding it there, and she proposes to hold it there. Instead of listening to that demand upon the only basis they have a right to consider any question, the basis of the Constitution, they shut out the Constitution and all argument upon the Constitution openly refused to hear it and played into the 
hands of the churches which had already secured this and thus fixing indelibly in the legislation of the country that thing which has been done. A.T. Jones and others from the Adventist church went there to petition in regard to its unconstitutionality. But in the previous High Court decision, a few months prior, they'd already made their interpretation of the Constitution according to law, and it fitted in perfectly with the church's desire. The Constitution was irrelevant as they were concerned. He says, Now what errand have we to Washington anymore? What 